Well, praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for another opportunity the Lord gave me to come and share the Word of God with you on this Wednesday. It is June the 5th, praise God, 2024. And once again, I'm Pastor James A. Dansby of Great Commission Fellowship here in Birmingham, Alabama, declaring once again that Christ is the answer to every problem that we face today. Praise God, we are scurrying about uh, from here to yonder, trying to make matters better here in the world today. But the answer is right nigh thee, the Bible say, even in thy mouth. Praise God that Christ is the answer to all of our problems if we would only put our trust in him. Praise God and lean not, the Bible says, unto our own understanding. That's where the problem come in. Praise God. Man trying to solve problems that only the Lord can solve. And it's so easily if we only humble ourselves in the, my, under the presence of the Lord and allow him, praise God, to lead and guide us through uh, this difficult situation that we're facing today. Amen. But now I hope and pray that you're ready to study God's word with me. Praise God on this uh, beautiful, beautiful day. I guess we look a little cloudy from time to time, but it's a beautiful day because every day is a beautiful day. The Lord has made it. Praise God and praise God. We bless his holy name. But I hope and pray that you get your tablets, your pencils, get all your tools together so that you can show yourself a workman uh, that's worthy of God's uh, revelation, of God allowing us to look deep into his word today. Praise God. Matthew 6 chapter is what we're looking once again. Matthew 6 chapter, we looked on past Sunday. We looked at this uh, Sermon on the Mount, this portion of the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, Matthew 6, 19 through 24. And that's what we're looking at once again. Once again, 19 through 24. And uh, I encourage you to write the scriptures down and later on go back, look at them again. Praise God, I do, I do, I do believe that God honors uh, uh, our efforts when we really show great interest in his word. Praise God, after all, his word is everything. Amen. Uh, Matthew 6, again, verse 19 uh, Christ speaking, Christ teaching on the Sermon on the Mount. He says, Lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth, where moths and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through and steal. For where your treasure is, that's where, praise God, where your treasure is. Now, listen now, that is where your heart will be also. And then verse 22, the Lord says, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. And if thine eye be evil, he says, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? Verse 24 again, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot. You cannot serve God and mammon. That's the word of God. You cannot serve God and mammon. Let's bow here for a word of prayer. Father, Lord, I thank you for this time. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that you granted me once again to come and to share your word with your people. Now, Lord, I realize it's not by might, it's not by power, but it is by your Holy Spirit that the word of God illuminates our hearts and minds. Now, Lord, I pray that you'll speak through me, Lord. And I pray, Father God, that those whom you have brought to this broadcast, Lord, that you might give them ears to hear and give them eyes to see. And Lord, I pray that they might bring forth fruit to your glory and to your honor, some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. And Father God, I'll be so mindful to give you all the praise. I give you all the glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Praise God, amen. Now, look again there uh, at uh, that 22nd uh, verse uh, as we move on to part two in this series. Uh, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body is full of light. 
But if thine eye be evil, Christ says, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. And we want to use for a subject in this part two, uh, in these three great messages that Christ uh, is uh, revealing here, uh, we're going to use for our subject, uh, again, a question, has Christ opened your eyes? Has Christ opened your eyes? For there is no other way that you can see into the spirit world unless the Lord opened your eyes. So the question is to you, praise God, you that say you're saved, you know the Lord, you love the Lord, has Christ really and truly opened your eyes? That is the question, amen? But now, in this part one, in this series, in this part one of the series, uh, like again, like I said again, Christ is teaching on that, his Sermon on the Mount is what it's called, really. And he tells us to stop laying up treasures on earth. But instead, he says here, to lay up our treasures in heaven. That's what the Lord is teaching here. Praise God. And we also learn that it is not about how much it's not how much you have or how much you don't have. That's not the issue. Hmm? That's not the issue. A person can be rich and godly, and a person can be poor and godly, and vice versa. Rich and ungodly, poor and ungodly. Amen. But now, the problem is when we make earthly riches our treasures, hmm? our rewards, when we make earthly riches our reward, when we're living to accumulate riches, and that becomes the satisfaction of our lives. When we look to them, to riches, to make us happy and to, uh, to be blessed, to bless us. Amen. And, and when we act as if riches have some kind of power uh, to bless us apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm, impossible. Amen. The only thing that matters today is our relationship with Christ. That's what matters the most. Is he? Hmm? Is he? And he alone, praise God, is he your Lord and is he your master? Uh, is he and he alone the one that has power to bless you, to satisfy you, to curse you? Hmm? That's the question. Praise God. And as a result, the whole world and his treasures are, are, are passing away. They're passing away. See, he, the Lord Jesus Christ, he can bless and he can curse. He can curse us. But you know, since man has fallen, the very image of God, the very image of God has been defaced. We'll call it defaced. Er not completely erased, but defaced in us by our sins. The very image of God has been defaced. And it brought us under curse. Every man, every man born of a woman is born under a curse. Hmm? And that has threw the whole world, praise God, into a tailspin. And, 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 and therefore, everything is dying. Even those things that we depend upon so much, our treasures, our earthly rewards today, they all are passing away. Amen. That's what the Bible teaches us. Everything will eventually be lost. Hmm? Praise God. Everything is dying. Everything will be lost. Uh, either the Bible here says here, uh, he says in this, uh, in this, in our scripture here, either the moss going to get it, the rust going to get it, or the thieves going to steal it. And if that don't, uh, praise God, uh, 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 cause the demise of everything on this earth, then the Lord himself will make sure that this world will be completely destroyed. Everything is coming to an end. Praise God. In all things, it's going to become brand new. Praise God. Christ got on his board. Praise God. He got plans for a new world, a new heaven and a new earth. Praise God. The question is, are we putting our trust in the Lord or are we putting our trust in uh, the treasures of this life here? Praise God. We looked at that uh, 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 a little bit in our first message here. But now what we want to take away from that first message is the fact that we need to get our priorities straight. 
We need to get them lined up straight. Amen. We need to lay up treasures in heaven that will last forever. Last forever. Hmm? It's not wise of us to invest our talents, invest our times, invest our resources in a ship that, praise God, is sinking. Huh? This world is sinking. Praise God, it's sinking. Uh, and we, but we're investing our time and talents and, 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 and our resources in this world rather than investing in the one that will never fail. Huh? Praise God. One that is eternal. Hmm? But sadly, uh, even though this is a great offer the Lord has given us, uh, there's no stampede to take, uh, uh, Christ up on this altar. We don't find people running uh, to the Lord today to take up on the altar the fact that what we see is going to all come to an end. But people don't seem to believe that. So that brings us to our message today. Praise God. As we move along in this uh, three-part uh, message here, uh, in these few verses here, look at uh, Matthew 6, 22 again. Matthew 6, 22. Praise God. Here's where we are, and we're going to see the reason why hmm? so many invest in this world's riches, this world's rewards, rather than in Christ and in the promises in the word of God. Why is it so? Well, Matthew 6, look at it again then. huh? Why? He says, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, a single eye. The whole body shall be full of light. In verse 23, he says, But if thy eye be evil, thy whole body is full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great? How great is that darkness? Hmm? Why is it? Why is it? The question, why is it? That so many people invest in this world's riches, the promises of the world, huh? this world's uh, rewards. Why so many invest in it rather than in Christ? Well, the reason many do, do this is because uh, in the uh, they have put the world and its resources and its riches ahead of Christ. They've chosen huh, to invest in the world riches rather than invest in Christ. Why? Because we just read a while ago, most people have bad eyesight. Hmm? They have no eye, no spiritual eyesight whatsoever. They cannot see the things huh, that are real, the things that are true, the things that are real. You can, they cannot see it. That's why they would rather invest in this fallen world, this world that is going down, rather than that which is eternal. Amen. Bad spiritual eyesight. That's what the Lord says in this uh, Sermon on the Mount here. And all those who are unsaved cannot see clearly. Praise God. And there's some saved people that, that really uh, can't really see clearly. But uh, most all unsaved people cannot see clearly that which is right before their eyes. The Bible said the word is not thee, it is even in thy mouth. Praise God. The word of God, the promises of God is right there. It's right in our eyes. But we cannot see them because we have bad spiritual eyesight. Amen. That's what the Word of God teaches. Look at Mark 8 now. Let's go to Mark 8 here. What are we doing? We're looking at, we're, we're looking at the reason why people would invest all of their time, their talent, the resources in this world, in the promises of this world, the riches of this world, and the, uh, uh, the, 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 the rewards of this world, rather than invest in Christ our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They got some problem with the eyes. Is that what that was? That was that was the Lord said. So I praise God. There's no light in their eyes. Look at Mark, Mark eight now. You 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 write these down here. Mark eight is what we're looking at. Mark eight, and we're gonna look at twenty two there. Mark eight twenty two. Why is it that so many people uh, will invest their time, their talents, their resources? Uh, in the, praise God, uh, in the promises of this fallen world that is going down uh, rather than in Christ. Look at Mark 8, 22, and it says he, meaning Christ, coming to Bethsaida, and they bring a blind man unto him and besought him that he would touch him. Ask Christ to touch this blind man. And 23 says, and Christ took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. 
And when he had spit on his eyes, hmm? he spit on his eyes and put his hand upon him. He asked the man, he asked him if he saw out. Could he see? Hmm? In verse 24, uh, and he looked up and said, the man looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. Hmm? I see men as trees walking. And we know that uh, he, the Lord had to touch him, touch him again. Amen. But now like Eve though, if we go back and think of Eve in the garden and this, uh, this man here, this blind man, they both were touched by the Lord. Hmm? The Lord had touched them both. But they both had bad eyesight. Hmm? They had no eye for spiritual things. Hmm? The blind man only saw a man, a man touching him. And Eve only saw a tree that she thought was good. Well, it was that a tree that was good for food. She saw that. Huh? Even though now, even though God had told her not to to eat of that tree. Hmm? And that he told her that if you disobey me, if you disobey me, then complete blindness huh, was going to set upon you. That's right. Praise God. Not only you, but not only you, Eve, but all your offsprings would be born blind also. Praise God. And so it is today. Hmm? Praise God. Blindness that leads eventually to death. And that's the spiral. That's why we, the downward spiral that we all are caught up in at this very moment, if we are without Christ, if we are without Christ, it's a downward spiral. Huh? We're all born blind. We're born blind. We're born deaf. We're born dumb, actually. Hmm? Dumb to the things of God. Dumb to spiritual things. Every one of us. Hmm? The Bible said we call good evil and evil good. And you can see it today throughout our culture, throughout our society. We have called things that are good evil, and we call things that are evil good. That's what we do today. Every person, every person who rejects the gospel of Jesus Christ, hmm, you are blind, you are deaf, you are dumb. Hmm? You can get well, cross-eyed, nearsighted, what, and all the rest of them. Amen. Huh? If you have rejected Christ and the gospel of Jesus Christ, then you are blind. You cannot see. You cannot see the things that are before us, right before us. Amen. Because of your lack of spiritual eyesight. That's what the Bible teaches. Amen. Go to Hebrews 11 now. Hebrews 11. And let's thrash it out a little bit here. Uh, Hebrews 11 and 24. Hebrews 11 and 24. Why is it again that so many people invest their time, their talents, their resources hmm, in things of the world, even though the world is going down, the world is dying? Why do we invest in the things of this world and the rewards of this world? Well, the Lord says there's a problem with our eyesight. We just can't see. huh? We can't see the things of the Spirit of God. Now, that's what the Bible teaches us. Amen. But every man, every man, until you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, and until he open your eyes, that you can see that those things that the Spirit of the Lord reveals unto us. Amen. Hebrews 11, 24. Let's look at that together. Hebrews 11, let's find it here. 24, you write it down now. Hebrews 11, 24. Uh, we, are, we are looking at the problem here of the blindness. Christ says there, uh, there are eyes that cannot see and there are ears that cannot hear. Uh, is that you though? Are you one of those? Are you one of those? Now, that's the question there. Look what it says in 24, uh, uh, Hebrews eleven twenty four. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather, verse 25, to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Esteeming, verse 26, the reproach of Christ, his estimation was that the reproach of Christ was greater riches, he says, than the treasures of Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward that comes from God. 
Huh? Look at verse 27 there. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who was, who is invisible. Hmm? By faith again, look at 27 now. He forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. So he saw something that others did not see. Hmm? Moses chose to leave all the glories of Egypt. Think about that now. He chose to, lose, to, to, to leave all the glories of Egypt and to suffer with the people of God. Why? Why would you do that? Because he saw, it's all in your eyes. He saw hmm, that the reproach that would come from identifying himself with Christ hmm, was a much greater treasure than the riches in the richest kingdom in the world at that time, which was Egypt. Hmm? Amen. Listen, it's, that's what he, he saw. He saw that suffering with Christ was a greater, would bring a greater return in his life than all the riches in the whole world at that time. Hmm? And that should be and must be our mindset and our eyesight if we're going to uh, be a part of Christ's kingdom, we must have the same eyesight. See, Moses, he bypassed an opportunity to become the prince of Egypt. He bypassed that. Why? Because he had a single eye. If thine eye be single, the Lord says in the Sermon on the Mount, your whole body is going to be full of light. Moses had a single eye towards the things of God. Hmm? Single eye. Straight ahead, things of God, not distracted by all these things around us like most of us are. Huh? He was looking straight at the Lord, a single eye toward the things of God because of the light that was in his eyes. And that light enabled him uh, by faith to see the invisible things of God. Who eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what God has in store for them, praise God, that will love and believe on him and trust him. Huh? Moses peeped into, praise God, the invisible. Hmm? Why? Because uh, he had faith in the Lord. And that faith uh, kind of lit up. He had light in his eyes. He could see beyond what it looked like, beyond what most people are chasing today for notoriety and for reward. Amen. Praise God. See, earthly treasures, earthly treasures, and successes look good when your eyes are void of Christ's light. When there's no Christ's light, no light of Christ in your eyes, the things of this world look good and you go hard after them. You'll go hard after them. You'll put all your energy in them hmm? because of the darkness that's in your eyes. Amen. That's what the word teaching here. That's what Christ is teaching here. Christ endured the cross hmm? because of his single eye. Christ had a single eye that was full of light, enabling him to endure the cross, hmm? praise God, and to do the will of his father, praise God, praise God. And he, 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 was, he knew that the spars and the rewards uh, would come to him if he would just obey the will of his father. He had a single eye. Praise God. And of course, the spars, of course, the rewards, of course, is none other than his family. That's me. That's you. If you're truly saved, we are the spars of his, uh, uh, of his single eye toward the things of God, toward doing the will of God rather than the will of man. Praise God. Look at the Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. And we're going to, we're going to find two there. Let's just skip down, skip one, go to two. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, the author, the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Joy. Hmm? Praise God. Joy. How can you see joy in going to the cross? Huh? They said, but for the joy that was set before him. Oh, he had a day at a different eye than most of us, right? He endured the cross. He despised the shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Think about it now. See, Christ could see 
Huh? Because of the light. Because of the light that was in his light, in his eyes. He could see that when we do the Father's will, huh? When we live for the Lord and doing his will, huh? Praise God. In this world, in this blind world that we live in today, this sinful, blind world that we live in today, if we would be determined uh, to do the Father's will, huh? Praise God. And we, our whole body is going to be full of light. Praise God. That's a single eye. Hmm? Then untold blessings will be released upon us. Amen. Again, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither have it entered into the heart of man the things which God has in store for them. Praise God that love him. Praise God and obey his word. Praise God. What a great reward. Hmm? You remember Christ, uh, after feeding the 5,000, uh, a couple of times he fed this great body of people. And, and they wanted, the Bible said they wanted to make him a king. They wanted to make him a king. Uh, but he knew, Christ knew that all of the accolades of this world could not, cannot compare with the glories that are in the Father's house. Huh? He knew that. He could see huh? that there were, there were better, and, and, and there were better things on the Lord's side rather than the world. But many of us have chosen the world, a sinking ship. Hmm? And I know many of you don't believe. Many of you don't believe this world is going down. You don't, don't, you don't believe there's an end because you didn't believe the Titanic could sink either, did you? Huh? Oh, it was unsinkable. Oh, it was unsinkable. There's just no way you can sink. Huh? And a lot of you feel that same way about the world. That's why you're investing your talent. You're investing all your time, your resources. And because you're looking for the accolades and the rewards that come from this world. Hmm? That's because there's darkness in your eyes. Hmm? That's what Christ, that's what he taught here. Amen. See, the quality of your vision will affect everything about you. Hmm? The quality of your vision. You know, it, it's amazing when you go to the doctor uh, and uh, your, your foot is hurting and uh, he wants to look in your eyes. Uh, well, my eyes ain't hurting, bro. Uh, it's my foot, you know, but uh, the wonders of the world, your eyes. Huh? See, if you have good vision, then Christ says your whole body is full of light. Hmm? But on the other hand, if your eyes are bad, you will always be going in the wrong direction. Mm? You will follow the world, and the world is coming to an end. Huh? Your eyes are bad. You'll always be eating the forbidden fruit, like Eve. Hmm? Why? Because it looked good. Or you know that old saying, everything looked good ain't good. But that's what we do today. Huh? Eve looked at the fruit, and it didn't look good. Praise God. It looked good. No if and but about that. Huh? And it probably was good. That was not the point. That was not the point. The point is that the father said, don't eat it. That was the point. Huh? Look at Matthew. Go, go, look at Matthew 6 again. Uh, our, our regular teaching text here, 23. Let's look at it again now. If thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If your eye is evil, your body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light, listen at this now. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? If therefore the light that is in thee, now what is Christ saying here? Well, uh, first Christ, is, he's acknowledging the fact that there is some light in all of us. In all of us, there's, there's, some, there's a measure of light. But now, if that light is darkness, hmm, it's worse than having no light at all. That's what he's teaching us. Hmm? Let me try to illustrate this picture. Let me illustrate this to you best I possibly can here. You, 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 you see a beautiful, and, we, and, and there's something here I think we can relate to. You see a beautiful car that you want. Okay? Beautiful car. Hmm? Uh, and, 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 and even maybe you see a house. A beautiful house in the burbs that you like. Hmm? And you want that house. But you can't afford it. You can't afford it. The light in you see the beauty of that car. The light in you see the beauty of that house. But at the same time, 
You don't see. You don't have enough light in you to see that buying that car or buying that house will plunge you into an even greater darkness than total blindness. Hmm. You like that car. You see the beauty of it. You see the beauty of that home there. And you want it. But you don't have enough light in you to see that if you buy that car or that house, hmm, it's going to strain your budget. Cause you to have to work more, overtime, spend time away from the family. Can't even give God a dime. Can't give him an offering. You can't sleep well at night. You're short-tempered. Praise God. And on and on and on. In other words, that little bit of light, that enabled you to see the beauty of that house and that car, huh? and led you to purchase maybe even that car or that house, is going to plunge you into a greater darkness, a greater darkness than total blindness. See, you, you would have been better off if you were totally blind then you would, then if, if you were totally blind, you would never have seen the beauty that was in that car and in that house. A little light. And that's what Christ was saying. A little light there in that verse 23 there. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that light? Eve saw the beauty of that, uh, of that fruit. Hmm? But there was a dark part there in disobeying the Lord. Amen. And again, this person also cannot see that making his treasures the things of this world. When we make the things of this world our treasures and our rewards, we put ourselves in bondage. Most people can't see that. Hmm? Eyes but can't see. We put ourselves in bondage. You, we toying around with a, a dangerous serpent called covetousness. Covetousness. Hmm. Oh boy, that's that's a greater addic addiction a addiction uh, than cocaine, <laughs> cocaine and and fentanyl and and uh, meth and all the rest of them. Covetousness. Hmm. Oh boy. When you are bit by that serpent, praise God. Then. Your vocabulary kind of dwindled down to just two words, really. And that is more. More. You just want more. Amen. And all, uh, all you'll get is more darkness. That's all you'll get, more darkness. But now, you, if you look at the TVs today, and, uh, you know, we got um, here in Alabama, we're scrambling, scrambling over these lottery things. People wants the, wants the lotteries. And the governor won't let them have it. Ah, don't let them have it. She's smart, huh? They want the lotteries, though, don't they? Huh? They want the riches. Hmm? Not the kind you labor for, sweat of your brow. No, they want that easy stuff. They, they look at too many TV game shows. They got all kind of new shows on TV now where everybody winning money, winning money. Ain't nobody working for the money. They win the money today. So this is what we got in our culture, in our world today, in the church. Praise God, the church, the church. And it's prosperity teachings. Hmm? They all encourage more. More. They say more is good. More is good. More is happiness. More is success. More is such a great reward. Huh? That's the way most people think today. Amen. And this is why Christ was teaching on the single eye. Praise God. The single eye. If your eye be single. Now, now we, we, we don't, we're dealt with on the problem. Now, before we close out here. We'll do it on the problem. So for the next few minutes, let's look at the solution here. What is the solution here to this problem? If you identify as a Christian, if you identify as a believer in Christ, and you find yourself right now struggling because you are too often uh, uh, trying to amass or as Christ said, laying up treasures here on earth and not in heaven. If you find yourself in that position, then the problem is with your eyes. With your eyes. Hmm. You just don't see well because of the darkness that is in you. Hmm? See, the only way you can improve your vision 
Mm -hmm. your, your, your spiritual vision is by looking at everything through the lens of God's word. You got to look at everything mm -hmm. through God's word. Amen. God told Eve that the fruit, huh? God told Eve that the fruit wasn't good for them. It wasn't good for them. That's what he said. Not that it didn't taste good, but it wasn't good for you. Hmm? Wasn't good for you. It wasn't good for them. And simply because the Lord said so. The Lord said so. And as believers in Christ, our reason for living should be to glorify the Lord. That should be our reason for living today. Glorifying the Lord and obeying his word. That should be your reason if you say you're a believer today. Hmm? The world is living for the world. I understand that. We understand the world. The world is going to be the world. The world don't understand anything else. But you that say you love the Lord, why is it that seemingly you are living and investing in the rewards of this world? Why is it? Hmm? Praise God. Our only reason for living is to glorify the Lord. Without the interjection of our what I think. Well, I think this here. Well, I feel this way. Hmm? Well, we must accept God's word. It's God's word. It ain't about your feelings. Hmm? Praise God. We accept God's word. David said uh, in Psalms 119, he said, the entrance of thy word bring it light. The entrance of God's word brings light. Hmm? That's why we need to stay in God's word. Praise God. The more word we take in, the more light we take in. Christ. Uh, mother, you remember what she said, don't you? At the, at the wedding, when they ran out of wine, whatever he said unto you, just do it. Just do it. Praise God, you trust him. huh? That's John 2, amen. So now, if we want to see clearly the things of God, the things that are nigh us, the things that are right here in our face, if we want to see them clearly, we need to continuously attend to God's word. Hmm? Praise God. It is through God's word, through his word, that he is revealed to us through his word. We will never see clearly until we see everything. I say everything through the lenses of God's word. Everything. Praise God. But now, as we close for today, Christ's commandments to his church before he departed was, go ye therefore into all the world, all nations. Teach all nations, he says. Huh? Teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Teach them. Hmm? It is though it is through God's word. It is through God's word that we see what is wrong, we see what is right, what is acceptable to the Lord, and what is not acceptable. It is through and in the word of God. And the reason why there's so many, there's so little light. In our churches today, very little. The reason why, praise God, is very simple. It's very simple. The reason why there is so little light in the church is because the gospel of Jesus Christ is not being preached. Mm -hmm. Praise God. The word of God teaches us what is right, what is wrong, how to worship God, and to give him thanks and praise. The word of God teaches us how to treat our brothers and sisters. Praise God. That's a commandment, second commandment there. We got to treat love one another. The word of God teaches all this. Amen. But it's because the gospel is not preached today in our churches. Hmm? No gospel. Very little gospel. Huh? The Holy Ghost, because there is no gospel there, the Holy Spirit, the third partner in the Godhead, he will not bear witness. Hmm? He will not bear witness to these prosperity messages. He won't bear witness, brother and sister. You're wasting your time. Huh? It may sound good. Sound good to the flesh, but there's no spiritual enlightenment in prosperity message. Huh? None in these motivational, worldly success messages. There is no enlightenment there. As a matter of fact, you've been plunged deeper into darkness because you are feeding the flesh. You are feeding the flesh, that which we're supposed to be uh, uh, mortifying, according to Paul. Huh? Praise God, these motivational message, and not to mention these fleshly, uh, emotional, strange fire messages, hmm? full emotions, strange fire. It says the Holy Ghost, but it's strange fire, huh? where there's no word, 
and more all emotions. Hmm? A strange fire. But instead, we, we allow, uh, 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 the Lord, He allow us to, if we want to be full of darkness, then God will allow you to do that. Huh? He allow us to plunge deeper and deeper into darkness when we deviate from the Word of God. Hmm? Praise God, the Word of God. The Holy Spirit message today to the church is just one word, one, one word. Huh? This culture today, the church today, repent, 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 for the Lord is coming back again. Huh? We need to turn back, turn back to our first love. Praise God, those of us that are saved, turn back is what the Lord said today to you and to me. Let us pray. Father, I bless you today. Lord, I thank you for giving me an opportunity once again to share your word. Now, Lord, I pray the power of God, the spirit of the Lord might move upon the hearts of those who are uh, teetering on the edge of blindness and some that are blind. Lord, I pray that you would open their eyes, that they might see that the rewards of heaven far out distance, the rewards of this earth here. And Lord God, I'll be so mindful to give you all the praise. I give you all the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, if you receive this word today as from the Lord, if you receive it, I would ask, as always, pray with me, pray for me. That God will continuously speak through me and I will be attentive to his word, listening for him to speak to me through the word, through the word now. Through the word, through the word. And then I would ask that you share this message uh, with uh, your loved ones or uh, share it with your friends and those of you that have uh, podcasts or whatever uh, means to share this word. I would ask that you do this as a part of your love for the Lord. Amen. Then subscribe. And when I come again, I bring you another word. I bring you another word. Praise God. A word from the Lord. A word from the Lord. In God's will on Wednesday. On Wednesday, I'm going to bring you part three, the final part, uh, where the Lord talks about your treasures, uh, serving, I mean, serving God in mammon. We're going we gonna to deal with that, you know, and then we're going to ask you another question, too. Is Christ your only master? Hmm? How many masters are you trying to serve? See, all these three messages that we looked at here, they're all basically in the same area of impressing God or impressing man. But we'll look at that on Wednesday. And uh, uh, usually I would come back on Sunday, but Sunday is communion in our fellowship. And uh, Pastor going to bring a special communion message, which you'll be able to see on Sunday. But then God's will will take you will finish this part three on the following Wednesday or before that time. But praise God. Until that time, may God bless you and may God keep you is my prayer today. Amen. And thank you, Lord.